Hey, this is Tyler Theater Design Company. Uh, been a while since we've posted. Uh, this should be episode seven. We we'll go over the lighting control in our demo room. And uh, I dig into this pretty deep at about eight minutes to give you an idea of what we have for equipment. Um, so you can see we're much farther along on the demo room. I'd say 95%. The door we just opened is getting changed. And uh, what I'll do is I'll go over a bunch of the different aspects of the lighting, uh, give you an idea of what we got. So we'll go over the screen wall that you saw. We'll go over that on uh, our next episode, number eight. And uh, we'll work on also the equipment of the demo room. You probably saw there's a PD uh, layout there. But uh, let's get to some of the lighting. You see I'm turning it on now. So we've got multiple zones of RGBW LED lighting. Uh, we went all 12 volt on here. It's not a huge room. If it was a larger room or had long runs, we'd probably bump that up to the 24 volt version. We've got the uh, star ceiling kit from uh, Epic Star. We built all the panels. We've uh, Frenched in a light here. Uh, lit up the now showing sign. And uh, going to go back to the controller and change a few things. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this in demo mode. That's what, uh, what we're calling it. And uh, we'll jam a little bit of music here and uh, show you what this thing can do as far as the different lighting colors and zones. And then I'll tell you a little bit more about it before we dig into the equipment on it. gives you an idea of all the different colors it can do we're probably only showing a handful of out of the hundreds and hundreds of colors that the RGBW lighting can do um, like right here for example we've put it in a, basically a bright white mode or RGBWW within the controller settings and uh, that just basically turns the whole room to white It'd be a good cleaning mode and then I'm gonna go back here and uh, go on our controller here and uh, just show you a few of the different things it can do. So we turned all the lights off and I'm gonna walk to the back of the room and, and go in from our other door here so you can see the effect it does with the lighting. And so this is looking in from the back. You can see the uh, screen, 120 inch Seymour screen, putting the down lights on. So those are Halo 4 inch cans, 5,000 K bulbs. Turn those off. There's star ceiling turns on, RGBW lighting turns on. I go over the different zones uh, in a few minutes here on the video. And then what I'm gonna do is show you the advanced controllers, the lights on. So advanced controllers, there's four of them. That gives you your step lighting, cove lighting, And then the other thing we do on these is we uh, we generally do the lights on the Furman. We do Furman pull-out LED lights on uh, most all the equipment racks we use uh, have these. And then last, I'm going to walk down here. I'll show you a little bit close up on the now showing sign. See the perimeter lighting on the bottom. And again... Thanks for watching and go over the details on this a uh, bunch more in the next couple of minutes here on the video. I really dig into the LED controllers, uh, the lighting control, the KX7 RTI. So again, thanks for watching. Hey there, this is Tyler, Theater Design Company. Gonna go over lighting control system in our demo room. I'm gonna try to do this uh, kind of piece by piece to give you an overview of what it takes to do a lighting control with multiple zones. Uh, to start off, as you saw in the previous part of the video, we have a seven inch touchscreen that we're using for an RGB and lighting controller. So that piece is running off the RTI Advanced Controller. It's an XP8V. 
Um, they make various different versions, XP6, 8, um, even an XP4, so you don't have to go crazy and do a rack mount. And then that is being controlled um, two different ways. So we have this thinking controlled, pop this open by the Lutron. So we can go Telnet and go back the opposite way and tell the Lutron to control a few things in the advanced controller. And then what we're also doing is using serial commands from the advanced controller to tell the RTI to do certain things on the main repeater of the Lutron, as well as we're doing only serial control to our advanced controllers, which are in the box below. So to kind of recap, we're using the Lutron system for basic CAN down lighting and to control various on functions only. So we basically use the Lutron to turn on the power supplies that run our RGB lighting controllers and star ceiling. That way we can have them preset to say we want the whole room to be blue. We set that up within the RTI touchscreen and that will revert back to that same command every time the customer, in our case the demo room, we hit our Lutron Pico switches. Um, so it's a simple uh, but very effective way to uh, control that uh, lighting features without having to pull open a remote control or anything else. Uh, so you got a Lutron Radio Raw 2 main repeater, Lutron Connect, and then PCM4, which is a serial adapter. And those control the two Epic Links, the advanced commanders for something else we're working on. But we've got Epic Link number one, which is running the star ceiling. Epic Link number two, which is using the shooting star. And then we're running a serial command from the XP8 down to our advanced controllers. So we have four advanced controllers. The first one does our cove lighting. Second one down does our perimeter lighting. And the third one down does the stair lighting. The fourth one, we're actually using it as a four channel controller. And that's controlling our exit sign using channels one. The now showing sign using channels two. Channel three is for the uh, movie poster, which is backlit. And then channel four is a future one that we have some wires prepped if we want to do some uh, seat lighting or something like that. So that's a future. So those are all there. I'm going to uh, try to show you the power supplies. Those are back behind this equipment. Okay, so I apologize for the mess in here, um, but I wanted to give you kind of an insight on how this runs. So the Lutron system itself, we're using eight amp switches to control the power of these that's what allows us to revert back to our save settings in the epic controllers so the first panel out of three here has meanwhile power supplies and those are running the star ceiling the shooting star and some other control in the uh, theater the second and third panels down are meanwhile power supplies um, they're basically four amp power supplies that are uh, running the controllers uh, so you got four controllers each box here has two mean well power supplies so you got panel one two three panel two are holding the power supplies one and two for advanced controllers one and two and then advanced controllers three and four are powered from our lowest panel okay so i'm back in the lobby here the only thing i wanted to show you here otherwise is something we do on a lot of equipment racks which is we use the Furman pl rack mount power strips so pl8c's this one here in the middle is a pl plus which has the power of the equipment rack which is a nice feature and we like to use the lights on those for the obvious reason it gives it a nice effect to light the racks super easy you gotta have power in your equipment racks anyway and then the other thing i wanted to go over here is we're using pico pads here so i'm just using a basic pico four button and what you can see is the top button is our lighting the second one down we're killing the can lights and then we have it turn our star ceiling on and it turns all four of our epic controllers on the shooting star is automatic and we have it set for every 10 seconds the third button down just turns the can lights on or the down lights to a setting more of like a cleaning mode and then our fourth is an all off button and so we have a four button here and we have a three button at the other entrance. This is basically the back entrance to our theater and our office, our sim racing rig and a speaker demo room. So I'm gonna turn these back on and give you some insight into the theater. 
So basic Halo 4 inch cans. And then we did on the same circuit as the Halo cans, we flushed in an LED strip light there. I didn't want a can to be looking out of place. And then as I walk through, and I'll turn these back on, the video show. So we have our exit sign. We have in our millwork, we Frenched in one inch LED aluminum channel. And again, we're still in, in still in construction. We're still working on this, but we're close. So those are flushed in with diffusers. Our cove lighting, which you can't see in the star ceiling, we have our cove lighting up here. And what we've done on that is we have, again, we have a channel from Cluse, but we're using their uh, raised or their dome diffuser cover, which helps dispute the light. You can kind of see some of the star ceiling poking through. And then as we drop down, there's our perimeter lighting again. Our now showing, which is backlit with the LED strip. And then we have our movie poster, which is using dual LED strip that's backlit around. And then we're using a clear Opti for the front. And then we're using a diffused 40% to uh, let the light come through on the back of it. We have our step lights which are, don't have the diffusers on them. They're Frenched into the stone. And then behind this seat and behind that seat, we have some wires that were prepped a long time ago in case we wanted to add LED cup holders or anything else within the lighting control. And I'm gonna step out here. And again, we're still in construction, but we're close. So here we have a Pico 3 button. And again, top button just turns our basic lighting on. And then if I hit the center button, turns our star ceiling on, dims the other lights to 25% and turns on our lighting feature. And then the only other thing I wanted to show you was the zoning. So what we did here with our KX7 is we have all the light features. So we have cove lighting. So I just turned that to blue as you see. You can see these are still in their white mode. And then I can go over to my step lighting. So see that one's now gone green so that's a separate zone perimeter lighting's white so star ceiling we'll end up having a control in here to actually turn the star ceiling from twinkle uh, we can actually turn the star ceiling off from here that's not programmed in yet so perimeter lighting so turn that to red And then we did the overhead, which are our wall wash lights or our down lights. And then number six is our lighting features. So what we're able to do here is we can turn off all of our lighting and then we can turn it on individually. So movie poster, we've got the now showing sign. Actually at the button, there it goes. And then I don't think the exit sign turned on. So we'll turn the exit sign on. I think it turned on. Nope. Helps if I hit the button. Then we have our exit sign. And again, star ceiling. Can lights, which are good for wall washing. Uh, they've got 5,000 K bulbs in them, which are a real realistic color to uh, keep the fabric how it should look. That's an important feature to keep an eye out. Uh, you could always do like Lutron Ketra or something higher in, or WAC Lighting has a few different things that we're looking at. Um, but these are what we had, and these have been in place for two years, so we didn't change it. And then again, you can see the perimeter lighting. It's flushed into the millwork. So that's the tour of our lighting. Uh, probably a lot of repetitive and redundant stuff, but it'll give you an idea of what you can do on one of these rooms. And hope you like the video. The next one we're gonna do is on our screen wall here. And then we'll do a final walkthrough and we'll try to go over every aspect of the room once it's 100% and clean. Um, it's still, we're still in construction mode. It looks clean, but it's not. It's a lot of dust and everything else that needs to be done. We still have some work on the stone. We still have some transitions. Our uh, base molding's not in. Our auto, this door is actually an automatic door. So that will shut automatically. It will not open automatically though. Alrighty, thanks again.